Hey everyone, this is the second video in the My Sensors Getting Started video kind of series, I guess, that I'm working on. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a motion sensor using this sensor here. Uh, if you haven't seen my uh, Serial Gateway video, I recommend you check that out because I'm actually going to be skipping over some of the elements that I've already covered in there, such as connecting the cables to the radio, things like that. So if you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to the store and order some parts. Okay, so here we are at the MySensors store. The address is just mysensors.org forward slash store. So I'm just going to show you the components you need to build this sensor. But what I'll usually do when I'm ordering parts is I'll order a couple extra of the cheap ones because you'll probably end up using them in other projects. And that way, if something's not working right, you can swap out those sensors just to make sure that it's not the sensor that's bad. So the first item we're going to get is the Arduino Nano. So I use the Nano in this project just because it's really easy. You don't have to solder anything and you don't have to add a regulator for the radio because you can just tap off the 3.3 volt power on the Nano. Uh, but if you're feeling ambitious, you can definitely go ahead and order Arduino Pro Minis. I personally use Arduino Pro Minis for pretty much all of my sensors just because they're smaller and cheaper. If you're going to choose the Arduino Pro Mini, you may consider getting the 3.3 volt here. Um, I've been using that for most of my sensors that I've been building recently, just because I'm already supplying, for the most part, my Arduino Pro Minis with 5 volt. So if I need to get 5 volt power, I'll just tap off of that supply instead of taking it from the 3.3 regulator. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit beyond the getting started of this video and what it was really intended for. So long story short, just order an Arduino. If you know how to solder, you can get the Pro Mini. If you don't, just start it with the Nano and then you can learn how to solder later. Now we've got our Arduino. We need to get some cables. So if you haven't ordered them already, uh, you'll just order some of these DuPont jumper cables. We're going to get female to female for this project. So you can choose the 10 centimeter or the 20 centimeter. Uh, and while you're at it, you may just consider getting some male to female cables just for future projects. Um, usually it takes a long time for these parts to get in. And it's frustrating when you have to wait for something simple like a cable. So they're so cheap, you might as well just get a couple of the male to female while you're at it. But if you're just following along with this project, all you'll need is some female to female cables. Okay, the other thing we'll need is capacitors. So I'm gonna click on components and capacitors. So if you've already ordered them when you're following along with my Serial Gateway video, you won't need any more. You'll just need one more 4.7 UF capacitor. I'd recommend getting this uh, 100 pieces and that way you'll be set for a long time for any of your capacitors. Okay, and lastly we'll need a motion sensor. So I'm just going to go motion and sound and then you'll see them listed here. So I personally use these, these full size ones, but if you wanted, you could also get the mini one. I just don't know how well it works compared. I'm, I'm assuming it works fine, but this is the one I'm using for this project. So if you want to follow along with me, just get this sensor here. And that's all you need. Okay, so now I'm just going to go over to the build page of the My Sensors site, and I'm going to choose Motion Sensor. So this is going to show me how to wire up my sensor if I'm going to use the default code provided by the My Sensors project. So you can see from the wiring diagram that it's fairly easy. I'll just connect in the ground, the power, and then the output of my sensor into pin 3 on my Arduino. Okay, so here's my motion sensor. Notice there's no labels on the pin side of my sensor, but if I pull off the front cover, then I can see what I'm supposed to connect into here. So I've got VCC, which is the 5 volt power, I've got the output, which will go to pin 3 on my, my Arduino, and then I have my ground. So I'll just connect these up here. Okay, so my orange one is going to go into ground. My red one is going to go to pin 3. And then my brown one is going to go to 5 volts. Okay, so it's all connected up and it was that easy. Just connect in three pins and now you have your motion sensor. So if you want to, you can adjust these trim pots here. Uh, this one will be your sensitivity and this one will be your time. So that will determine how long it's going to be triggered for. So if you want it to be triggered less or more, you could adjust that. And then if you want it to be more or less sensitive, 
you could adjust this one here. Okay, so now we're ready to upload our code. So all we'll do is connect in our USB cable into the front of the Nano here. And then connect this into our computer. And then we can open up the motion sensor sketch in the My Sensors library, Libraries sample folder. And then just upload that. Now if you're not familiar with how to do that, uh, go ahead and take a look at my, my first video on building a serial gateway and you just follow that same exact process. You could just open up the motion sensor sketch, plug this in your computer and upload it. Now that you've connected your sensor and uploaded your sketch, you're ready to add it to your controller. So you're going to want to consult the My Sensors page for the controllers that you use for the process for adding it or including it into your controller. Uh, but with Avera, which is what I use, what I do is I go to the Vera page and then I go to the My Sensors plugin and I press the Start Inclusion button. Then what I'll do is I'll plug in my sensor to power. When I plug it into power, that initiates the startup command to Vera and then it will recognize my sensor. So after that, I just power cycle it one more time for it to send the sketch info over and then it's a fully functioning sensor. I have a super cheap motion sensor added to my Vera. Okay, so now that you have a fully functioning sensor, you may be asking yourself, well, how do I power this thing? So all you need to do is just take the cable that came with your Nano, plug it in, and then plug the other side into a cell phone charger. Now I realize that's not the most attractive look. Uh, you probably don't want this laying around in a prominent area of your house. But this is just the basics of how to build a sensor. As you get more advanced, you can use other methods uh, like this PCB board here. You can solder in the components directly so they get much smaller. Uh, you can 3D print out cases, all sorts of different things. But this is just to get you started and then you can take off from there. If you're interested in creating other sensors, check out some of my other videos. Uh, I made a smart outlet where I show you how to solder and fit things into a much smaller case. And I'm also using a Pro Mini. Well that's it. Congratulations, you just built your first sensor.